Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today we are going to create a swinging rope that looks like this. Let's get started. I have prepared a simple texture here in advance and this is just a small piece of rope. So start by clicking on 2D scene. Rename this guy to rope. We can right click the rope node, click on agile node and find the line 2D and click on create. Now press Ctrl S to save. Now just create a new folder by clicking here on create a new folder and type in rope. Since I've already created mine, I'm going to go in here and save this guy as rope.tscn in here. So click on save. Next, in order to create the rope, we're going to build it up with many segments. So go to scene, new scene, click on 2D scene and call this guy rope segment. Press enter. Then right click on the rope segment and go over here to change type and type in rigid body and find the rigid body 2D here and click on change. Now this is going to complain because it needs a collision shape. Right click on the node, click on the child node and find the collision shape 2D. This guy there and click on create. Then go over to shape and click on new capsule shape 2D. Let's zoom in a bit here as well. Next, right click on the rope segment node again, click on agile node and find the pin joint. And what a pin joint is, is a joint that attaches two physics bodies at a single point, allowing them to freely rotate. So we need this guy and click on create. Now go here to the transform for the pin joint 2D and set the position in the Y axis to be four, like so. Next, we're gonna go here to the collision shape 2D and we have to change the size of this guy. I'm gonna make it a lot thinner. It's gonna be like this. And then you wanna pull this guy up. Something like that. And we're gonna move this guy up. We can make it a bit smaller as well. Something like that. So you wanna make sure that the shape looks like this. And for the transform, it's gonna be on minus four pixels here. All right. Next, let's go to the rope segment. And here we're going to set the mass to be 25 kilograms. And the gravity scale is going to be 0 0.5. Then go to here to linear and set dampening to be 0 0.15. And what this does is that it's going to damp the body's movement. It's going to look a bit more like a rope that is swinging. Next, we can save the scene. So press Ctrl S to save. And we are in the rope folder, and that's good. And save this guy as rope segment.tscn in here. So click on save. Next, right click on the rope segment node again and attach a script. And save this guy as rope segment.cs. So click on create. And then here we can simply delete everything. And we're going to add two variables in here one to check which index in the array the rope segment has. And then another variable so we know which rope the segment is part of. Press control is to save. We can now minimize. Press control is to save here again and go to rope scene. Right click on the rope node, click on instantiate cell scene, select the rope segment and click on open. I repeat the process, right click the rope node again, instantiate cell scene and add another rope segment and click on open. Read the first guy, rope start and the second guy to rope end. And we're going to move the rope end node here, around here. And the rope start a bit above, like so. Next, we're going to create a script. And what we need to do is to add rope segments between this point and this point down here so we can create a rope. So, right click on the rope node, click on attach script, save this guy's rope.c is in here. So, click on create. We're going to add a variable here so we can set if the rope bend should be static or not. And by having a static rope end, we can create a rope from the start point to the end point here. Next, we are going to set an interval scale factor. And this scale factor is used to determine how much space there should be between every pin joint as the rope grows. So let's make a really long rope. As you can see here, as the rope grows, the interval between the pin joints here is becoming longer. So if I make this a super long rope, we start here quickly. 
like this, we can see that there's a lot more spacing between them. And I find 0.03f to be a very good value because you can make very long ropes with this. Next, we need access to the rope segment as a packed scene. We also need access to the rope start and the rope end nodes, these guys right here. And to make it a bit simpler as well, we're going to access the start pin joint and the rope end pin joint for these two nodes, which means we're going to go into the rope segment and get the pin joint for them as well. And in order to draw the rope, we're going to have a list of vector twos here. And to fix this guy, we're just going to hover this quick fix and click on use on systems collections generic there. We will also need access to the line 2D node that we have right here on the rope. And finally, we're going to need a list of the rope segments here. Then in the render method, we're going to create a new list for the line 2D points. We're also going to load in the rope segment packed scene. And we're going to grab the rope segment scene here, which is this scene right here. After this, we are going to get the line 2D node, the rope start node, and the rope end node. These three guys here. And here, we're going to say which rope the rope start and the rope end belongs to by simply setting them to this, which is the current rope that we are creating. Then we're going to get the rope start pin joint and the rope end pin joints, as I showed you earlier. We're going into the rope and we're going to find the pin joint 2D here. Next, in order to be able to build a rope, we're going to need two helper methods. And the first method is called connect rope parts. And this method takes in two rope segments, A and B. And what we do here is that we get the pin joint from the first rope segment. Then we connect the pin joint to itself. And then we connect it to the second passed in rope segment here. And by doing so, we connect the two rope segments together. The next method we need is the add rope segment method. And this guy is going to return the rope segment that just was added. It's going to take in the previous rope segment, an ID, the rotation angle, and also the position where to add the rope segment. First up in here, we're going to get the pin joint of the previous rope segment. Then we're going to instantiate a new rope segment by taking the rope segment packed scene, dot instantiate. And we typecast this to a rope segment. Then we set the segment's global position to the passed in position here. Then we update the segment's rotation to the passed in rotation angle here. Then we define which rope the segment belongs to and set the index in its array to the passed in ID here. Now we can add the segment as a child to the rope by calling add child and pass in the segment. Now that we have the segment in place, we're going to connect the previous pin joint and this node A to itself. Then we connect node B to this current segment. So they are connected together. After this, we need to set the pin joint's bias to be 0 0.99 and the softness to 0 0.003F. And finally, we can return the segment here. All right, so we now have the two helper methods in place here. And we can now start to build the method to create the rope. We can scroll up a bit here and just underneath the render method. We're going to add the method public void spawn rope. And first up in here, we're going to get the rope start position and the rope end position here. Next, we're going to get the total distance between the start and the end points here. We take the rope start position, dot distance to, and the rope end position. Next, what we want to do is to dynamically calculate the interval based on the rope length. And we're going to have a base interval between each pin joint. And it's going to be 10 pixels. Then we're going to set the dynamic interval proportional to the rope length. So to calculate the interval, we take our base interval, which is 10 pixels, plus the distance here, multiply with the interval scale factor, which by default is set to 0 0.03f. Next, we're going to get the direction. And to do this, we take the rope end position minus the rope start position, and then we normalize it. Next, we need to calculate how many segments we have. We take moth f and the ceiling to int. Then we take to calculate the distance, which is the distance between the rope start point and the rope end point. And we divide it with an interval that we calculated. And in this way, we will now get the number of segments the rope is going to contain. After this, we need to calculate the rotation angle. 
So we take the direction that we calculated, dot angle, and this is in radians. Then we need to rotate this. So by taking pi divided by 2, we are rotating the angle counterclockwise with 90 degrees. And this is to ensure that the vector is pointing up. All right. Next, we set the index in the array for the rope start to be zero. After this, we are initializing the position for the first joint. We set the current position to be the rope start position here. Next, we need a variable to keep track of the latest segment. And the latest segment is going to be initialized to the rope start segment. After this, we make sure to clear the rope segments list. And then we add the latest segments, which now is the rope start, to the list of rope segments here. Now that everything is set up, we're now going to loop through all the rope segments. And the first thing we need to do, so when we are adding a new segment to the rope, we need to move the position along the direction we have between the start point and the end point. Then we multiply how much space there is between one segment and move that along the direction. Next, we run our add rope segment method. So we pass in the latest segment. And then to give it an index, we say i plus 1 here to start the numbering at 1 instead of 0. We also pass in our calculated rotation angle and the current position we just calculated here. And then we run through the code here. And now that we have the latest segment updated, we simply add the latest segment to the list of rope segments here. Then we need to get the pin joints global position from the current latest segment. And the reason for this is that we need to see if the current position has reached the rope end. And if this is the case, we can simply break out of the loop because the length of the rope has now been reached. And now that the rope is finished, we need to connect the rope end to the latest segment. And to make sure that it won't look weird, we also need to update the rotation for the rope end aligned with the direction of the rope. We set this rotation angle here to what was calculated up here. Then we add the rope end to the list of rope segments. Next, we check if the end of the rope is static. And if this is the case, we're going to call rope end .freeze and set this to true. And if we have a look in the Go.game game engine, we can select the rope end. We can go to the deactivation here and hover the freeze. It says here if true, the body is frozen and gravity and forces are not applied anymore. So by setting the end rope to be freezed, we can create the rope that is connected at two points. Like this. All right. And finally in here, we can give the rope band its index in the array here by setting it to the number of segments. All right. So we can now create the rope, but we cannot visualize it yet. So in order to visualize this guy, we can scroll down to the bottom here. And just above the process method, we're going to add the method update line to the rope. So first up in here, we're going to clear the list of the rope points. Next, we add the rope start pin joints global position. And after this, we're going to loop through all the rope segments that we have created in the rope. And we're going to add the segments global position to the list of rope points for the line 2D. Then once we've added all the segments in between the start and the end point, we can add the rope end position as well to the list. And finally, as the list has been built, we can convert the row points line to the list to an array and set the line to the node points here. And the way that line 2D works, if it's like this node, is that we can go here and click on the packed array and start to add points to this guy. There's the first point. We can add another element. Here the X is going to be 20. You can see we are building up a rope here between the points. Let's add one more. 60 in the X axis and 20 in the y-axis, like so, as you can see. But we're doing this in code instead, so we can delete these guys. Now let's go back to the code quickly. Now this is all we have to do in order to update the line 2D points. We can grab this guy and throw him here into the process method. Press Ctrl to save. Let's go back to the go.game engine. We don't have any special graphics. It's just going to be the default color, so we can try this guy out quickly. Let's click here on run current scene. We can see the rope is just falling down. And to fix this, we're going to click on rope start. And we can go here to the activation and make sure that the first point is freezed. Let's run this guy again. And currently, we just saw this guy was falling down. So to fix this, we're going to go back to the code. Because the final part is to throw in and spawn the rope here in the render method.
like so. Let's press Ctrl to save and go back to the Godot game engine and click on Run Scene again. Now you can see the rope was hanging there. Select the rope end and let's make sure the move tool is selected and let's put it somewhere up here. Run this guy again. You can see we have a rope here. But now we need to add the texture as well. So we click here on line 2D and go ready to fill and drag in the rope texture.png, the texture here. That's a texture mood the tile. And if I run now, it's going to look a bit weird. You can see here it looks stretched. And the way to fix this is that you have to go to here to texture, that repeat, to enabled, and then you run this guy again. And there we have our swinging rope. Now let's create a main scene as well and add a few ropes in. You click on scene, new scene, to the scene. You can rename this guy to main. Press Ctrl is to save. I can save this here in the root folder. Just click on save. Right click the main node. And instantiate shell scene. Select the rope. You can open. We can right click and make this local. We can actually set the start and the endpoints as well. So let's move the endpoint here as well. We can have one rope swinging here. Um, we can add one more. Right click and make this local. Let's set the rope end somewhere like over here. Let's make a long rope. Now I'm swinging a bit here. Make the rope start. Put it somewhere like there. All right. Now let's click on play here. No main scene has ever been defined, so let's select the main scene for this guy. And now we have two ropes swinging. One long rope, and one small rope. Okay guys, the code is available on my GitHub page. The link is down in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.